In this video, I'm just going to touch on a couple basic things you may want to adjust in your software. So start in the beginning, go ahead and turn your gimbal on, and then we're going to connect to the computer with this USB cord that says to PC. And then on your thumb drive, you'll have the software, or you can also download it from the Basecam website or the Glidecam website. We'll go ahead and open that up right here where it says simple BGC GUI. And this is the version for on a Mac dot JAR. Okay, so once this is open, then you'll go down to where it says the uh, USB to UART and that's just telling the computer that we're reading the information coming from this USB cable and say connect. Just takes a second to connect and then on the right hand side you'll see the live view data from the gimbal so if I move the pitch up and down you'll actually see the pitch moving right here and then it'll show battery voltage right below that. Any errors will also show up um, right under here. First thing you want to do before making any changes is save your current profile. We've saved them to the USB drive, but it's best just to also have a backup on your computer. So click save, and then you can name it, just profile one, which we've already saved right here, and hit save. We'll replace file content. First thing you may want to adjust is the follow mode. So in the follow mode tab right here, you can adjust the speed of the follow mode. Say it's not panning left and right as fast as you want it to. Then down here, you can actually change that speed. So 60 is what we have it pre-programmed at. Um, you can go faster. If you go too fast, so let's put this to 100. If it gets too fast, then it may actually overshoot your positioning. But now, as you can see, it's moving left and right even, even faster than before. And you can set the speed of the pitch and the yaw independently. So we'll set that back to 60. And we're just going to leave the yaw, or sorry, the pitch at 40. But if you want it to move slower, put a lower number on here. Faster, put a higher number. The expo curve is also something you may want to change. And this is set at 50 right now. So it's if I move slow, the camera is going to pan slow. The faster I move, the faster the speed is going to be. So that's what the expo curve is related to. The dead band we have set to zero. And if you're going to be doing a lot of running, you may actually want to put this at 10 or a higher number. So we'll do 10 and say right. This means that as I move left and right 10 degrees, the camera is not going to be moving left and right. It gives me some wiggle room right in there where it's, the camera is going to stay pointed, but I can move left and right 10 degrees. Once I pass that 10 degrees, then the camera is actually going to start panning with me. If with it at zero, it just means that it's going to start panning right away. As I move, then the camera's going to start following. And I've noticed with it at zero, then you're going to have a lot better results walking around a subject. So say there's a person's head, and you want to be pointed at their head and walk around them and keep them center frame the whole time, then you're going to get a better result with this number at zero. So. Those are just a couple of things you may want to change in the follow mode. You can also disable the follow mode right here, which is going to be the same as profile three. Uh, we'll go back to the basic tab. Another couple of things you may want to change. If you're going to mount a heavier camera on here, you might actually want more power going to the motors. So for example, we have the pitch power set at 60 which is good for light cameras. And if you're going to do a heavier camera, you may even want that up to like 150. But also, the higher the power, the more you may notice some vibrations in the motors. So right away, you could actually start hearing this pitch motor vibrate a little bit. 
So that's something you may want to play around with. With a heavier camera, I do think you're going to want a higher power. And you may also want to increase this D value, which just helps with um, some of the stability of the gimbal. If the D value is too high, you're going to get more vibrations. If it's too low, then you're going to kind of notice some bouncing movement from the gimbal. So power and D value both affect those things. For this little Canon, having the power down at 60 seems to work pretty well. And with these D values. That, that's the main adjustments that you're going to want to do. Um, you don't need to do, but you can play around with different values here. And don't increase the power too high. If you, It'll go up to 250, but the higher the power, the more the motors will heat up. So if you do have the power all the way up at 250, then just kind of occasionally feel the motors and see how hot they're getting. There's a safety built in where if the motors get too hot, then the gimbal will shut off. Um, that's located right here for the emergency stop um, in the advanced tab. It's best to not keep that value too high and then you're just going to get a really long lasting gimbal performance. There's also the IMU calibration right here. So every once, maybe once a year, or if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, you'll want to calibrate that sensor and that's just located right here. But those are the main things. Any more information, you can reference the manual. And um, thanks for watching the video.